and welcome to Daily Planet. I'm Zaya Ta. And I'm Dan Riskin. We're all rested up from the long weekend and ready to swim with sharks. Indeed we are. Tonight's show just happens to be packed with sharks of all kinds, including one that can walk. Really? Indeed. Huh. We're also going to give you a sneak peek at the smoking new season of Discovery's Highway Through Hell. But we're kicking things off today with one man who has this rather crazy dream that one day we may all be flying in electric planes. Yeah, now, right now we're not because the batteries are huge and they're heavy and they only go for a couple of minutes. If your battery dies in your car, you pull over. If your battery dies in your plane, you die. This is very true. It's unfortunate and it is also accurate. So get ready to meet somebody who is crazy enough to prove the naysayers wrong. Who knows, he may even break some records while he's at it. As the sun rises over the Mojave Desert, a brand new aircraft revs up for an epic day. It'll go faster and eventually farther than any electric plane ever. If it doesn't kill its pilot first. There's a million things that can kill you when you're trying to break world records. I want to fly an electric airplane across the Atlantic Ocean. It's technically impossible. The best electric airplanes today are going 200 miles. I need to go 3,600 miles. Totally out there. Chip Yates is an expert at taking on the impossible. At 36, he quit his corporate job. All of a sudden I said, I want to stop doing this and I want to become a motorcycle racer. And I had never raced motorcycles in my life. Within two years, he was racing in the world championships until this happened. Broke my pelvis and I was out. I couldn't walk for a month. So I said, what am I going to do? I took the money that I had for the rest of the racing season and decided to invest in building the world's fastest electric motorcycle. So we built this electric motorcycle, set 10 world records, went 201 miles an hour. Then he had his most grandiose vision yet to be the first person ever to fly across the Atlantic Ocean in an electric plane. Right away, Chip hit some huge obstacles. So the first problem is that I'm not a pilot. His other problem was he didn't have an electric plane. So I didn't know anything about building an electric airplane. I figured if I tried hard enough and got the right guys, we could do it. I got my pilot's license five days before I flew the first time in this airplane. So it was timed perfectly. His team designed and built the electric system from scratch. The first flight went off without a hitch. Pentagon traffic, experimental electric 89 Charlie Yankee, safely on the ground, runway 33 for the maiden flight. Great flight, Jeff. great flight. On the second flight, having his pilot's license for almost a week, Chip decides to set the unofficial record for the fastest electric plane. 200 miles an hour, 201 miles an hour for 89 Charlie Yankee. Level flight, 4,600 feet, 202 miles an hour. I'm going to shut it down. A triumph for a few seconds. And 89 Charlie Yankee, I think I might have damaged some batteries, and I've lost, uh, lost power, so I'm going to glide it in. His engine is dead. He has almost no experience as a pilot, and his plane sinking lower and lower. He's turning, turning, then, with seconds to spare, Holy crap! Experimental Electric 89 Charlie Yankee safely on the ground. Which brings him to today. The plane has new batteries, and he wants to make his speed record official. This is practice day, so we need to fly four times back and forth over the runway at about 1,500 feet, 200 miles an hour. We want to make sure the batteries don't catch on fire. We want to make sure that I don't run out of juice. We gotta make sure that the uh, propeller chain drive doesn't break. Today, we're trying to make sure that I stay alive. I've flown this plane three times total. To help spot problems, his engineer will be following close behind in a gas-powered chase plane. We're his eyes in the back of the airplane, so if there's anything leaking or if there's smoke in the back of the cockpit that he can't see, we're there to tell him about it and then also to keep an eye out for traffic. All right, these things is kind of ready to fly. Takeoff goes smoothly. A good omen for the new batteries, but coming out of the first turn, Chip's plane starts gushing liquid. It looks like about a two-inch wide stream that streams all the way back to the back of the gallon. Okay, guys on the ground, a little oily. Mission aborted. This is highly, highly experimental. So if I'd kept flying, um, all the oil would have leaked out, and the chain that drives the propeller shaft would have gotten very hot, and uh, it possibly could have failed, it could have exploded. On closer inspection, they realize just how bad the leak is. Oh my God, Jeez. Holy smokes. Look at that. My beautiful electric plane, my gorgeous white paint job. What a mess. As always, Chip looks on the bright side. The plane looks good to set the world records. It's gonna be exciting. 
It's the big day. Time to break the record. We gotta make sure we have this exactly at 60 PSI. Check auxiliary power. Make sure we call fire rescue. Make sure the fire trucks are out on the field just to be safe. We've got a brand new electric motor. This thing's about $30,000. So I'm tired and broke, but we're ready to fly now. He goes up without a hitch. Four months on. You're clean and dry. Clean and dry, thanks for that. Uh, I got a problem. I got no power. Yet again, his motor has died. And this time, he's low to the ground. He sets his course for the nearest road and just hopes no cars are driving there. Experimental electric again, Charlie Yang. The emergency landing will be out of the field. But Zach has a better view, and he thinks Chip can make it to the airport. Looks like you're good to go if you go to one zero. The ground gets closer. Keep the nose down. Closer. Closer. You the man, Chip. That's right in history, no one's flown this fast in an electric airplane. What comes with that is risk. I would love to have fewer incidents, but each one is getting resolved and moving us forward. With so many close calls, other pilots would rethink their plan to fly across the Atlantic, but then other pilots just aren't Chip Yates. I put goals out there that sound outrageous, but I chip away at them piece by piece, and I always do what I say I'm going to do.